balancing of chemical equation. This topic is from chapter 1 of NCRT science textbook. Chemical equations and the different types of reactions. The first portion of that lesson is balancing of chemical equation. What do you mean by chemical equation? A chemical equation represents or it is a symbolic representation of chemical reactions. What are chemical reactions? Chemical reactions are reactions in which new substances are being formed. In a chemical reaction or in a chemical equation, two things are there. First is the reactants and the second one are the products. See, suppose we are taking this example. A P plus H2 giving a P3 O4 plus H2. The substances or the elements written on the left side, they are called the reactants which react or combine. And the substances or compounds formed after the reaction are known as the products. And in between there is an aroma. So this, the left hand side of the equation is the reactant side and the right side, right side of the equation is the product side. So reactants combine together to form new substances in a chemical reaction. So what are the characteristics involved during a chemical reaction? In most of the chemical reactions, there are certain visible characteristics so that we can confirm that a chemical reaction occurred. First of all, there can be any evolution of a gas. Any gas can be evolved, either hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide or any other gas which can be tested easily and finalized. Second one, there may be a change in color. The color of the reactant and the product may be different. After the chemical reaction, the product form will be of different color. Then, there will be a change in the order. The smell changes. When a particular product is formed, a smell uh, can be sensed. Then, there may be an insoluble solid form. Means, insoluble solid form during a reaction is called a precipitate. It is easily visible during a reaction and it is in the solid form. In some chemical reactions, there will be an insoluble solid produced after the reaction or the insoluble solid form is called as a precipitate. Now, we will take the example of this equation for balancing. Iron reacts with water in the form of steam to form iron oxide P3O4 plus hydrogen. There are certain steps involved in balancing the chemical equations. The first step, see you people are familiar with how to balance an equation using the trial and error method by putting certain numbers on the left side of each element or the compound and balancing it. And what is the need? Why chemical equations should be balanced? Chemical equations should be balanced to satisfy the law of conservation of mass in a chemical reaction. What do you mean by law of conservation of mass? Means the total amount or total number of atoms in the reactant side should be equal to the total number of atoms in the product side. Or the number of atoms in the reactant should be equal to the number of atoms in the product side. For example, if you are taking this, here iron, only one atom is here. But in the product side, there are three atoms. Hydrogen, two atoms on the left hand side. Here, two. Oxygen, we are only one. Here, oxygen is four. So, this is not a balanced chemical reaction or chemical equation. So, how to balance a chemical equation? The first step is writing each compound in boxes. Means, inside the box, we cannot put any number. We cannot put any number in between the element. So, numbers can be written only on the left side of each box. The second step is identifying the number of atoms of each element on the left hand side as well as the right hand side. So, the element, which are the elements? Iron, hydrogen, oxygen. Iron, hydrogen, oxygen. Number of atoms in the reactants or LHS, left side of the equation, iron 1, hydrogen 2, oxygen 1. Then number of atoms in the products, iron 3, hydrogen 2 and oxygen 4. The third step, how to balance the equation, the first step is, you see the element which is having the highest number of atoms. Here in these three cases, iron, hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen is having the highest number of atoms so I am multiplying 
the left hand side of the equation which is having oxygen into 4. So this is the next step. When I multiply the oxygen with 4, the left side of where the oxygen comes in the in water, I am putting a number 4. So this 4 is for both hydrogen and oxygen. Now the number of atoms of hydrogen is 4 to the 8 and 4 ones are 4. So oxygen is balanced now. Left hand side 4, right hand side 4. But the next step, see the next step. Now hydrogen is 8 here. But here only 2. Now how to balance hydrogen? By putting a number 4 on the right hand side. So hydrogen on the right hand side multiplying with 4. Fp plus 4H2O gives Fp3O4 plus 4H2. Now oxygen is balanced. 4 atoms of oxygen. Here also 4 atoms of oxygen. Hydrogen 4 to the 8. Here also hydrogen 4 to the 8. Now the remaining element is only iron. Iron here only 1. Here 3. Now how to balance it? You have to multiply this element iron with 3. Then only the expression will be balanced. So the next step is 3 Fe plus 4 H2O gives Fe3O4 plus 4 H2O. Now check the number of atoms on the LHS and the RHS. Iron 3, here also 3. Hydrogen 4 to the 8, here also hydrogen 4 to the 8. Oxygen 4, 1 to 4, here oxygen 4. Now the equation is balanced. So 3 Fe plus 4H2O gives Fe3O4 plus 4H2. After balancing the equation, the last step is writing the physical states. What do you mean by physical state? An element or a compound can exist in many states. That is solid, it can exist as a liquid, it can exist as a gas at room temperature. Similarly, it can exist in one more state that is aqua state. What do you mean by aqua state? Any substance when it is dissolved in water, if it is a solution, it, is, it, it will be the solution form and it is dissolved in water, then it is called the aqua state. So any substance can exist in different forms. It can exist as a solid, it can exist as a liquid, it can exist as a gas or it can be in the aqua state. Similarly, if any insoluble solid or precipitate is formed, you can write it as PPT, precipitate. So that state should be mentioned in the last step. 3 Fe, it's a metal in the solid state. It reacts with water in the form of steam. Steam means it is in the gaseous form to form Fe3O4 iron oxide in the solid state, say plus hydrogen in the gaseous state. So hydrogen is evolved as a gas. So this is a, this reaction is an example for a reaction in which a gas is evolved. How can you test hydrogen gas? So suppose in a reaction if hydrogen gas is evolved, if you bring a burning candle near the mouth of the test tube in which the reaction is taking place, it burns in the form of sound. If you bring a burning candle near the mouth of the test tube in which a hydrogen gas is evolved, it, the gas burns with the form of sound. So this is the final step of balancing the chemical equation. So I'll tell once more the different steps. First one is writing the chemical equation, the equation which is given in boxes. So the equation, if it is not balanced, you have to balance it. Then identifying the number of elements, identifying each element and writing the number of atoms in the reactant side and the product side. Number of atoms in the reactants, that is the left hand side LHS. Number of atoms in the products, that is the right hand side RHS. Identifying each element, writing the number of atoms. The next step, see which element is having the highest number of atoms. In this case, oxygen was having the highest number, four atoms were present on the right hand side. Now how to make it four here or how to balance here? Multiply the left side with four. So this four, we have to mention on the left side where oxygen comes, not just before oxygen but outside the bracket where oxygen comes. So 4 H2O. This 4 is common for both hydrogen and oxygen. Not only for oxygen, it is common for both hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen becomes 4 to the 8, oxygen 4 1 the 4. So hydrogen is balanced, oxygen is balanced here on both the sides containing 4 atoms. But hydrogen here only 2 now here it becomes 8. Now how to balance it? By multiplying with 4 
putting a number 4 so that hydrogen becomes 4 to the 8. Now oxygen is balanced on both the sides with 4 atoms. Hydrogen is balanced on both the sides with 8 atoms. The last step, iron. Iron is not balanced here. I have only one atom here, here 3. So how to balance it? By multiplying on the left hand side with 3. So 3 Fe. See the next step. 3 Fe plus 4 H2O gives Fe3O4 plus 4 H2O. So I am here 3. Here also 3. Hydrogen 4 2 is 8. There also 4 2 is 8. Oxygen 4 1 is 4. Here also 4. Now this equation, equation is balanced. So without the bracket we can write the equation. The final step, mentioning the physical shape, which is very important. So here, iron being a metal, it is in the solid state. And next, iron does not react with water at room temperature. It can react only with steam. So water is in the gaseous form here, forming iron oxide, Fe3O4, plus 4H2, which is a gas. Iron oxide in the solid state, hydrogen is a gas. So, these are the different states. You, you have to mention the states whenever necessary. On the last step, you have to mention the state of each element or the compound which is involved in a chemical reaction. So these are different steps involved in balancing chemical equations. Now I told earlier, during chemical reaction, there can be any evolution of gas. So this is an example where hydrogen gas is evolved. Then there can be an insoluble solid form. Insoluble solid is also known as a precipitate. You can see it as the solid form. When two reactants are combined, a new product will be formed in which it will be in the solid state and it is insoluble. Then next, there can be heat change, temperature change. There, there can be either rising temperature or falling temperature. Such reactions are called exothermic reactions or endothermic reactions. Exothermic reactions are reactions in which heat is evolved when reactants combine together to form new products. Along with the products, heat also is produced. This is an example. See here. Methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water plus heat energy. Heat is given out during the reaction. Then next, there are reactions in which heat is absorbed. For example, nitrogen combines with oxygen. It absorbs the heat to form nitric oxide. See, it's a simple example. If you are putting one drop of acetone or one drop of any deodorant on your palm or hand spray on your palm, it evaporates after some time and that portion of our palm feels cold. Why? Because it absorbs the heat from our body. It is an endothermic reaction. Reaction. Similarly, the heat is absorbed. Such a reaction is called endothermic reaction. So there are two types of reactions in which there is a change in temperature. If there is a rise in temperature, heat is evolved. Such reactions are called exothermic reactions. If there is a fall in temperature, heat is absorbed. Such reactions are called endothermic reactions. The next step. By writing the chemical equations, the balanced chemical equations, you may mention some properties or certain conditions under which that reaction takes place. For example, carbon monoxide reacts with hydrogen to form methanol, CH3OH. This reaction occurs only under these conditions. There should be a pressure of 300 atmosphere, the temperature should be 300 degrees Celsius and zinc oxide and chromium oxide acts as a catalyst here. So such reactions occur only under certain conditions. The simple example of photosynthesis that reaction takes place only, only in the presence of sunlight. If sunlight is not, then photosynthesis will not occur. Such cases, such, such reactions which occur only in certain conditions, such reactions are also there. So you have to mention the conditions under which such reactions take place. So chemical equation gives, gives the idea about the physical state of the reactants and the products, the conditions under which the reactions can take place as well as there is any temperature change or not. Whether there is a rise in temperature, whether there is a fall in temperature. Similarly, if there is any gas evolved, if there is any insoluble solid form, if there is any color change, if there is a change in the order or the smell. So a detailed information about the chemical reactions 
can be given by chemical equations. So chemical equation is a symbolic representation of the chemical reaction. It gives us the idea about the reactants as well as the products. And similarly by balancing the chemical equations, we have to make the number of atoms on the reactant side and the product side same. The number of the reactants as well as the number of atoms in the product side should be equal, thereby satisfying the law of conservation of 